when Phil and I were growing up, we were listening to glam rock, status quo, rock and roll records, and um, uh, so T Rex, Mott Hooper, and Slade. And then I was at I was at someone's house, a friend's house, and it, it was this guy was a few years older than me, and he got out this record by the Ramones. And it was the first album by the Ramones. Put it on, and I listened to it. And I just, my jaw dropped to the floor. The thing that inspired us most, because I, as far as in the Warriors, I was in the last resort. And the thing that inspired us to play was that um, we used to go to this pub in Irvine Bay, where we lived. And there was these young lads called The Rivals. And they were four or five years young. They were young, young and, they were, and they had a band, and we thought, we should me and my mate Roy, like, you know, uh, Roy's now the singer now. At the f when we first started, I was a singer and he was a bass player. But at the time, we didn't have a band, but we weren't really wanted to start a band. You know, like, following the punk scene in, from the mid 70s and that, then it all sort of like fell by the wayside, the punk thing. And then the rejects come back in, who had come from a mile and a half up the road for me. Yeah. It was just a, a fucking, uh, the great thing for me, like, for the great band like that being from somewhere where I come and knowing the blokes. So as, as I say, like with the Foreskins as well, we were good friends of ours. It's a great, great time to be about, in that. especially with the music that you love. Yeah. 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 It just, it, it made sense. Hell, it was terrible. <laughs> My first amplifier was a valve tape recorder. Okay. Valve tape recorder. Yeah. And if I, if I put the, if I put the tape on and I put it into record and I plugged into the input and I turned up the input volume, I'd play the guitar and it would distort a valve distortion on a tape recorder and I could play for as long as the tape went from there to there. And then I'd have to take the tape off and put it on that side. I had something, something a bit similar to that. I worked out if you put it on record and then press pause. Ah, you can still didn't play think of that. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Peter got a, an amplifier, I got use of this recording, make this thing, it's and the, monster. the cab, it's the cab was this size. Oh my god! It had a massive Blimey. cab. A tape recorder. Yeah. Oh my god! It was. It sat on top, and it, it was like a piece. But when I <laughs> a radio, it's like a radiogram. <laughs> probably made out of quite nice wood as well. Probably, was it? <laughs> when I blew the speaker, funny enough, playing bass through it. <laughs> Does it? Did your dad? We, uh, we opened you, it up. You the, spe had, the speaker was this size. You had this cab. You had no idea that that was going to happen. Did you get a oh, hiding for that? I couldn't understand it. Did you get a hiding for that? Well, I mean, initially to start playing guitar was Nirvana. It got me playing guitar. Yeah, when we were still um, at school. Like, that's what got me into music and playing the drums and. So how old were you when you like first? Like, I was fourteen. Like the spirit or something. I was fourteen. I left school in '93, so I was like it was about 1992 that I got into that. And then from then we started listening to like Huskadoo. I think personally, Huskadoo was a big style on like the fast earth notes and. Uh, Huskadoo for me still, and then we used to listen to Minor Threat when we were in our teens, Fugazi, and then we progressed on to like Rancid and Scar and Clash for me is a big influence, it's probably my biggest like, influence. But I mean like I remember being about eight or nine and watching MTV at home and the only channels, that, the, only, the only thing that played music was, I think it was VH1 and MTV, and MTV, the only rock bands were on there were like, I think Nirvana, Soundgarden and Green Day, and they're the only three that I remember. Um, since I'm like 13 years old or something, like a little kid, that one of my, you know, like beside Exploited, Sex Pistols, you know, all that stuff, I was freaking out for Real Enemy when I heard the, that track the first time. And, but when they came back in 1994 with that Keep the Face records, they, they didn't, played the stuff they did in the 80s, they, they make the next step, you know? They put it always in the time, and they don't say like, oh, we do it like we always did. They always were like, thinking what they do and, and bring it on the point to the time. And they opened the door. They opened the door for so many bands later to play with different bands. To, to, to play festivals, 
And uh, yeah, I think that were without them, street punk and I wouldn't happen like it's going on nowadays. No. They got all the credit for that street punk and they took it beyond my wildest dreams, you know. And from that they copied, they, they, they got Lars as a producer, but they wanted to get another The Truth Records with that socialist working man element to it, which that's do or die record. But they took it beyond anything I could have ever done. So it's down to them that street punk He's around now. Um, Lars Fredrickson actually has joined the band now. He's our, he's our guitarist. So yeah, it probably has helped, maybe a little bit. So I remember when Rancid 2000 came out, he was wearing the t-shirt on that. Yeah, yeah. And I checked you yeah, guys but out even that. earlier that, the, the earlier than that, the uh, the ballad of Jimmy and Johnny, they mentioned the last resort in the song. Oh right, wow. Rancid do, yeah. So yeah, they they they're all big fans of the band. Yeah. All, all the all the guys in Rancid are big fans of the band. And, it, and it's nice to have them showing their appreciation in public. Yeah, I'm sure it doesn't do us any harm. Yeah. 
American Wasteland. Like obviously I'd heard bands like The Clash and The Ramones through like my parents CDs and stuff but like I never really got into that as a kid. The thing that like really made me get into it was skateboarding. Um, particularly the game Tony Hawk's Underground 2. <laughs> so all the soundtracks <clears throat> they were <clears throat> these dealers, Rancid, Dead Kennedys, this stuff and I was a skater and with my friends we were like oh let's download the songs put it in our mp3 so when we are out skating we feel like we are in the game <laughs> we started that and then we were like fuck this music is cool let's see the rest of the songs they've got because what's the song from seven seconds song from descendants so we download the whole albums and then we were like this is good man i like it It's sick. They have the best soundtrack ever. Like me and all my mates, that's how we got into punk. Like, hands down, that's literally the reason. If that game was never invented, we would not be punks. <laughs> we started to go to the city and they have some punk rock shows and we were like, oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> I need to say to all my fucking school friends who are not into this shit whatsoever and they just think it's all bonkers, you know, they think it's mental. But, uh, you know, I do, you know, in a way, I feel sorry for people who don't ever engage with this in any way because it is. You're missing out, bro. It is fucking awesome, man. <laughs> and it is a cool, it is a, it is a good worldwide network of people that you can engage with. When we started, the only aim we had was to get into gigs for free, get free booze, and meet cool punks. That was like literally it. <laughs> like, and um, we did that, which was cool. <laughs> we did that. Like, we, we got free booze, we drank the booze, we met the punks. Like, but um, then after a while, yeah, you just kind of figure out what it is you want to say. You know, you know what I mean. And, and uh, like after a few years of doing it, and trying to like play punk music we started to figure out how to play migraines punk music and figured out what our voice was what we wanted to say and do and yeah and then that became that you know? <laughs> I'm not afraid. 
Pokemon. Yeah, Pogo Punk, Street Punk, Oi. Uh, hardcore came later for me. Like, I think a lot of people like think Migraines are like a hardcore band, but like, in my head, we're a street punk band. But but like, obviously, we've progressed past that sound. You know what I mean? Like, we've been doing it for ten years. You can't play that for fucking ever and still love it. You know? Like, <laughs> and so, like, naturally, everyone is into that type of music. Bumps into each other somewhere down the line at a gig or whatever and everyone just fucking fuses bands and jumps from band to band and eventually this happens it's, we kicked off around 2011 um, we got in the practice room and again just pretty standard stuff just started jamming out come up with some songs and then we started really playing playing live uh, look like cutting our teeth on the local circuit around 2012 Playing some shows in Cardiff and in Bristol and in South Wales and uh, everything just kind of grew from there. Social, they do what they want, they don't give a fuck what any people expect from them, from us. They always did their own thing. We made people hate us, <laughs> like especially, and hopefully the right wing and the racist, racist people, and we made things clear. And uh, at the end, I don't care what people think about me and my band. Well, like my band, and I am, but I'm, you know, I'm more, I'm a free man. I think, I think all of us, if we'd had the opportunity, we would have been playing in a band professionally. Yeah. But 
Um, there, was a, there was a time when we started off in bands. All the bands around us were living in squats and they couldn't buy strings. They couldn't buy amplifiers. They couldn't run a van. So that's the choice you make. You know, you can, you can live the dream or you can try and get yourself a job, keep your sanity, keep your health and keep playing in the band. Yeah. We're just having yeah. a good laugh. We just yeah. like to get a few beers and that. Like to go away, have a meet up at the airport, a few beers, nice bit of breakfast, mm. then just go and get shit from you. Worse. You forget about everyday life. You forget about, you know, fucking bills and work and all that. Yeah. And you just, you know, every musician aspires, has had dreams, mm. you know, to do this as, as a job. But unfortunately... It didn't happen for any of us. Mm. So point, when we get away, that's us. <coughs> yeah. 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 We make the, the most of That's us, us living the dream for a well, weekend. Or yeah. Yeah. The thing is, like a lot of these, like a lot of these fans here who are like big names in this scene, they've fucking got jobs as well, haven't they? You know, it ain't, yeah. it, it ain't got to make a living out of it, really. Just, yeah. do, it, just, just do it for the love of it. Yeah. 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 With the music, for my family, my kids, traveling. Enjoying life and living the dream. So I, I want. Um, if they remember us, they should remember us as like not, not try to be friends with everybody. And in terms of my, uh, me personally, I, I put a lot back into the younger bands and younger artists because I always say that. All these people that love punk rock so much that are my age and the, the sort of established artists, they should, if they, if the punk that they love so much, they should be helping younger artists, whether it's writing with them, giving them shows, giving them encouragement, just a fair yeah, whistle, and, and yeah, whip, you know. putting back something into the scene rather than just taking the money each show and you know off you go and i think you know the fact that we're still around today just underlines that fact that what we sing about what we play about the lives we live they're real and they'll always be real there'll always be people coming up who just look at that and go oh well they achieve that we can do it as well you're, you're like us yeah yeah